Howdy folks and welcome back once again to another great episode of Home Build Happiness. My name is Ron and today, what? Earth bag? What is an earth bag? Well folks, we're going to talk about that. Now if you're new to the channel, my wife and I are full-time adventurers slash travelers. We've lived van life, we've lived cargo trailer conversion life, we've lived a life of travel in the United States, coast to coast, four different times, and we're still trucking, still going on adventures, still finding out new things every day. Um, if you are familiar with our channel and you're a uh, subscriber, then you know that we've um, been silent for a little while, and there's a reason for that. We're trying to take this homestead that we have here in the desert, and we're trying to make a home instead. So that takes a little bit of time. And since we're talking about homes and building homes, we're going to talk about earth bag architecture. And the reason why is because we're in the southwestern United States, and one of the most important building materials out here is what's underneath your feet. So let's talk about earth architecture. So what are people really doing when they're building with dirt? Are they just making sandbags? Are they just taking what's right here and just tossing it into a wall and that's it? Not exactly. So we're basically looking at taking a composition of earth that's going to act similar to concrete. So we're looking for a right amount of sand, a right amount of clay, and a right amount of silt. And there's actually some tests that you can do with a jar. It's called a soil jar test. And that'll allow you to see what composition you're working with. And hey, if you're somewhere where you don't have the right composition, you can stabilize the soil. You can put, you know, a couple shovels of uh, lime or Portland cement or whatever you got to mix into that, uh, into that soil to make it work. So when it comes to building with earth, you might call it dirt, but it's earth. And when it comes to building with earth, you know, we actually have proof now that folks were building with adobe as early as 5000 BC. So that's really important. And even here in New Mexico, you can go to ruins that are still standing today from the Pueblo uh, people that are God, five, six hundred years old, and they're still standing. You can go there right now. We actually have some ruins that are about 20 minutes from here that actually predate Christopher Columbus. All right, so let's get back to basics. Adobe. When we're talking about Adobe, we're, we're basically referring to uh, taking a, a wooden form and taking that composition of earth, you know, that suitable composition, pouring it into the form. We're just gonna pour it there, and we're gonna let it dry. Once it dries, it makes a brick, we put that brick on a pallet. There's actually, right now, currently, people still build with adobe, and there's an adobe farm 20 minutes that way. I'm not lying to you guys. So, what they do is they make these forms, they make these bricks, they put them on pallets, if I wanted to build with it, I'd have to get that pallet loaded up, get it here. We'd have to find some way to keep it dry before we can lay them, etc., etc., etc. All right. Rammed earth. When we talk about rammed earth, instead of making those blocks of adobe off site and having to let them dry, what we're going to do is we're going to build a big form the size of an entire wall right where we want it and we're going to take that earth and we're going to drop it right down in there we're basically going to lay the earth we're going to tamp that down hence rammed earth we're going to tamp it down let it dry we're going to lay another layer let it dry lay a layer let it dry lay a layer and so on until we get a wall and there's actually parts of the great wall of china that were built this way and they're still standing. They're still doing fantastic. Now that seems really good, right? Like they've done that for centuries and it's a really great thing. However, there's a lot of embodied energy involved in that. 
So when we talk about embodied energy, what we're talking about is the amount of energy that goes into this process from inception to completion. We're talking about the people that make the forms, set up the forms, breaking those forms down, palletizing, me having to get them transported here. There's a lot of steps just to get that into my hands. We don't want to do that, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to make a flexible form. Now that's where earth bag, that's where that's going to come into play. So what this earth bag basically is, is it's just a flexible form. That's all it is. Instead of using a, a, like a rammed earth form for an entire wall and using wood, which is ex extremely expensive right now, it just adds to the cost of the build, we can take a bag. There's different types that we can use. It's not going to permanently hold it together, but it is going to hold it together long enough for it to dry. Now once we get this earth bag dried, we basically have a brick on a wall and since we're building it in place, it can actually form, each course can form to itself. God, what do these bags look like, right? They sound fantastic. Well folks, let's go take a look at one. So basically this is an earth bag. Now what we're working with right now, and this bag was just made, God, probably five hours ago. You can see it's nice and hard. It's like a brick, it's already drying and this thing's only gonna get stronger as it dries. Okay, so this is a test bag that I've made off of some Hyper Adobe uh, tubing that we have. So this was purchased as a 16 inch uh, wide roll of tube. So with all of the earth in it and with it tamped down, we're looking at a width of 15 and a half inches. It's about four and a half inches tall. And this is probably about 150 pounds of earth in this bag. I would say it's probably three feet at this point. All we do is load it up on a bucket, we fill it up, we tamp it down, and then we let it dry. The really great thing about having a wall made out of this is it's a 16 inch wall. It's a solid 16 inch wall. And when it comes to, you know, insulative properties and things like that, it gets sort of interesting because dirt doesn't really have insulative properties per se, but what it does have is thermal mass. And there's a difference insulation is going to keep heat from coming through. Something with thermal mass is sort of like the difference between you cooking with a cast iron pan versus a small thin aluminum pan. One's going to heat up really really quick because it doesn't really absorb energy it just lets it pass through. Where a cast iron skillet it's going to take longer to warm up but it's going to radiate heat evenly and it absorbs a lot of that heat. That's thermal mass. The great thing about thermal mass is that in the desert, it's hot during the day, but it gets cold at night. Even in the hottest months of the year, we're still getting high 50s and low 60s by 3, 4, 5 in the morning. So the good thing about this is that it will store that heat during the day, it releases it at night, and then the next day once it starts to heat up, this wall is going to be cold and it's going to pass that on through. So it's going to be able to regulate temperature inside of a building really well. And I'm not going to lie to you guys, it's a cheap way to build. And not only is it cheap, anyone can do it folks, it's easy. You can have children doing this. You can have, you know, anyone out here and you don't have to worry about them running table saws and drills and, you know, things that they can get hurt with. Literally anyone can do it and it's very forgiving. So if you do mess up a little bit, you can simply plaster over areas of imperfection and you can make some very interesting shapes also when it comes to windows and doorways and things like that. You can be really creative and this is going to allow you the flexibility to do that. So why am I telling you guys this? 
why am I telling you about Earthbag and why on earth does the Home Build Happiness team have a roll of tubes? Well, like I said before, we gotta take this homestead and we gotta work on making it a home instead, which means we gotta build. We gotta put structures up. And folks, there's not trees in the desert. It's not a sustainable way for us to build to make a sticks and brick type structure. Adobe's the way you build out here. So we're gonna use what's called Hyper Adobe, which is using that continuous tubing that we were just talking about. And we're gonna start off by making a, uh, a kind of a storage unit, a storage unit slash workshop. And then we got some other plans. And to commemorate that, we've got the Epot shirts available. Now I'm gonna put this link in the description. Um, you can pick one up yourself. Now, Epot is the experimental prototype homestead of tomorrow. And if you look right here, you'll see that image created by Laren. It's a little indicative of what's to come. Now what we're building as far as a workshop isn't gonna be a dome. It's gonna be a, uh, a square structure with vertical walls, but we do got some plans in the future and we do have multiple structures that we're talking about putting into play here. So folks, if you haven't already, please subscribe. <laughs>